edtech industries uh, organization companies schools have become more um, education uh, technology friendly but i think in terms of learnings uh, and in terms of sustainability of uh, of education uh, and technology together integration there were a couple of things which we were discussing uh, one was which we started off by understanding is that this is not about integration of technology we're talking about meaningful integration so when we are saying meaningful integration it does not mean that you have to use 100 tools that are available online the quantity does not really matter we are saying even if you start with one tool that's okay we're also talking about needs so we are saying that understand your audience understand your target understand the requirement and then identify what uh, kind of integration you want to do so for instance we were talking about schools where we have no devices with children and maybe perhaps one mobile with the teacher and we're saying how do we then talk about you know meaningful integration and i think kemi there has guided us and helped us see that you know even if you're using any online let's say website to inform your teaching inside the classroom that should also be defined as meaningful integration of technology which we fail to see generally and i think that there was some which for me and also has been quite enlightening some of the things that we're talking about in terms of what we have learned um that in case we want to sustain this engagement we have to work on a variety of things and some of the those i'm highlighting right now one is that there is a clearly a digital divide so we need to uh, work on that otherwise there will be many other kind of device that we might end up seeing in the system right we are also talk about building infrastructure we talk about training of both teachers as well as students because even those students could be like the the generation who understands using devices but how to navigate the learning or how to we navigate even let's say youtube channel might not be something that they they know of so embedding that kind of training in learning spaces is really important we were also talking about digital wellbeing again uh, an area which uh, needs a lot of focus so okay about the research we are still struggling of course and we will be slowly moving towards that is also this idea of building relationships through technology those are things that we are still exploring we are still exploring uh, this idea of technology abuse which is an interesting word that came in because we have a variety of applications right now right and we want to use everything so how do we uh, not be on all platforms and how do we use effectively even one of them so i think we are there and i'm going to hand it over to my other friend which is yeah no no just say what okay. i want so uh, yeah for the next few seconds uh, this again rapport and social relationships with uh, uh, i mean when there was nothing else when people were uh, were in silos protecting themselves then technology yes and today it can just supplement nothing uh, it is not one at the cost of the other uh, both go simultaneously you have to see its need and if it is effectively used you can get more time for hands on activities project work and all in school if you do certain activities at home so so more of social skills can come that's from our team Uh, thank you so much uh, for giving this opportunity. And uh, actually, uh, we were talking about school as an enabler, and uh, well, there was a lot of thought about it. And uh, what we really uh, thought was that there has to be a change of thought, right? That's I mean, I, I came <laughs> to the end of that only. And uh, yes, a change of uh, thought starts with the self. Yes. So each one, if we you know, kind of. Uh, Uh, collaborate and uh, we, we you know together we kind of uh, do things where we can have partnerships we can have collaborations we can have feedbacks and then we could have uh, you said uh, what was uh, you, spiritual yes so we could have all those aspects looking into that of course then it becomes school uh, is a place where of course there's a lot of learning uh, yes and that should be continuous and we have to make them fair there so cause covid made us very fearful that was one of the aspects which we need to kind of you know uh, have the children overcome that so anxiety and all those of course we talk about a lot of things but basically what i feel is that it should start with self uh, self means even if uh, take ownership take responsibility each one uh, you know should come forward even if it's a school even if it's a person it's an individual then each one has to act and not look at that you know, that's that's the country and i mean even if we talk about russia i mean i'm sorry i'm just going a little bit further but yes why are we just looking at it and we not really participating it's it is our world thank you <laughs> thank you thank you so we started off by this
table first by actually deconstructing what we have here as a phrase, school as an enabler of whole person. We're talking about what is school. And there we had a lot of contribution, a lot of back and forth about whether school is a physical building, whether it's an institution, or is it something more? Is it uh, a, a sort of a facilitator that can bring together different stakeholders that enable, enable education of a whole child? Or uh, can school do everything? So those are the kind of questions we grappled at. And when we looked at what is an enabler, then we went on to look at, you know, what do you mean by whole person development? So that's something we covered on in the, in the first round where uh, some of them made very interesting comments about how we need to lose the structure of the school. We have learned something from the past, but that perhaps that structure is not serving us enough anymore. So we need to lose something, add something more, so that we can build more resilient kids, more uh, resilient learners for the future, and enable them to sort of tackle the challenges that are going to, uh, they're going to encounter in the future. And, and we got, sort of built up from that, and in the second round, we looked at you know what are the values that uh, learners might need in the future. And one very interesting thing that came out from the whole conversation of how sports as a pedagogy has not really been given uh, its due importance. And there was a little bit of discussion on that. And, uh, and storytelling. And storytelling also. And then, then we kind of went on to looking at uh, is IT or is like you know digital the only solution to enabling uh, better learning or a better equipped learner to deal with future uncertainties? And, and that is where the role of school as an enabler comes in, looking at you know what are the stakeholders that the school can bring together and how can we do that? Is it through collaboration? Is it through community service? And then I'm just going to go back to these you know, continuous feedback to learners, more focus group discussions, trying to learn from different uh, best practices around the world, looking at uh, teacher networks and how those tools can actually enable better learning, and then trying to find a balance between just ad adopting something from a different system, but rather trying to adapt it to the context. So there was a lot of going on uh, back and forth on about how Sonam Wamchuk's talk this morning was very inspiring and there were a lot of examples being drawn from there like, oh, we want to do something like that. That's what he was saying. Perhaps we're not doing something like that. So, so it was overall a very interesting conversation. Okay, I'm going to end before that. <laughs> so teaching and learning. Apart from the teaching and learning, we have taken what kind of the curriculum, the pedagogy, and the content uh, will be prepared for the student in a certain future. So that we have discussed about especially the four things, especially what are the skills required for the student and as, uh, as a part of the teaching wise. And also we have discussed with the curriculum, pedagogy, and content. First we will go over few the skills are missing, how to think, and the majority vocational and the uh, skills are missing, interpersonal skills are missing, and also SEL skills are missing, problem solving skills, spiritual skills, and kindness. If we are including these skills while teaching and learning process, it will be good for the day. The same thing, and the curriculum, uh, while preparing the curriculum, we should be, uh, we have to divide based on the research. Every five years, we have to do the research, what are the things, and the curriculum should be in the view of the locality, based on the locality situation, all the things. With everything, we have to do the social action problem and based on critical thinking, how it will be suitable for the content curriculum. What are the challenges? <laughs> okay, very quickly, maybe one or two points that uh, Sora has actually. Uh, so, there was one whole conversation about that in terms of spirit. And thank you. Everyone. So the theme for uh, this table was uh, emotional well-being and what space to communicate their feelings. The need to connect with students as a friend and not just you know someone who's telling them do this, do, uh, don't do this. And instead of uh, handing them the solutions, um, asking the students to reflect, to observe and reflect upon things and come up with solutions. Expressions, how do they express themselves. So all facilitators for that and then also um, connect with nature as one of the skills uh, that is important to uh, important for emotional well-being. So taking the students out for nature walks, um, helping them 
with you know spending time with nature engaging um, with nature observing nature so uh, these are few of the things that were uh, discussed on this table and uh, some of the challenges that were discussed was implementation of course we have these big sounding words and we all know that this is important but the extra burden that comes on the teachers you're asking i think a lot from the teachers from what we discussed and then there are policies which are sometimes misinterpreted and misimplemented so we discussed about those policy inconsistencies and by the time the teachers are well equipped to deliver what those teachers because as a woman we all know we are handling our houses and lot many are single parents also yeah men and female and female both could be so anger management and frustration management yeah because so many questions are there from the students they are definitely curious about so many things either when it comes to uh, the hormonal changes so we suppress the things that are spoken about but digitally if we start working on this and uh, with stakeholders and the parents then we get together on one platform and then decide how to communicate to the students for their upbringing so that they can do like flowers thank you <laughs> and you summarize it beautifully just one point i just wanted to focus at it was also discussion i think in both the groups that the continuum approach you know when you want to emotional wellbeing for your for the children you need to also ensure it for the teachers for the parents yeah. and in the case of so it's not that you just work with the children and it happens you know so and and second thing it can it needs to be weaved in in the whole school so it's not that there is a special sel class but then you come back to a history class which is conducted in a most non sel supportive manner so so these two points i would like to add which also came up during the discussion and every stakeholder becomes so important the consensus we reached which everyone agrees is that every single stakeholder is important we teachers uh, students school leaders government officials everyone but the problem happens is the responsibility how do we define the responsibility in such a way that it becomes a positive environment where we can hold people accountable without playing the blame game we entered the discussion to find some solutions but it ended up with a lot of questions that we have in our head we will be pondering the entire day which starts from when we are thinking of empowering stakeholders who is the one empowering the stakeholders how is the process going to look like how are we measuring the success of it how is the trajectory going to look like are we listening to the people who are actually responsible for implementation beautiful example given by ma'am uh, about the south african transformation wherein it was led by the transformation education was led by uh, feedback from the ground we try to understand how does it fit into the context we have do we have enough systems to take feedback from all the stakeholders teachers already overburdened with so much work if and if taken into the part of uh, you know the so called forums that we have where we make them a part are we asking them relevant questions which genuinely make a difference into the implementation or is it just speaking about have we filled the utilized data or not have the administration process been completed or not or is it taking to you what do you struggle actually in the classroom so these were some big questions that we struggled with and i think we are still struggling to understand how this entire process is going to look like and would love to see more answers probably coming in the future <laughs> thank you to speak more instead of me talking because they are amazing and i wanted to continue the conversation further <laughs> so one thing i would like to add is the role of parents they are one of the biggest stakeholders and to have their feedback to cre uh, create platforms so that they can give their feedback in case the parents are not present to have caregivers who is invested in the child's growth and can give feedback to the teachers to the school administration is important also it is important to have cycles of feedback uh, including all stakeholders and uh, see what works what doesn't work what the evidence is telling us in both direction and then continuous monitoring and assessment <coughs> so that is important not to just let things sit there after one discussion or just to forget about the whole endeavor 
or to have namesick discussions that doesn't amount to much. Uh, so, which are apparently things that are happening quite a bit as I understand from the teachers. <clears throat> so, yeah, so stakeholders with having honest discussion, honest feedback, and having roles, responsibilities along with their rights. So instead of having the victim problem, trying to be the creator, and the executor, implementer, <clears throat> and play a role thinking that if I have the stake here, I also have responsibilities in this case. So that's what we have discussed, but we have a lot more quite open questions that I'd like to discuss more. So uh, adding what I've learned is, uh, first of all, I thank USK MJAT for organizing such, a, such an event. What I've learned is, achha, uh, tell me one thing, uh, how many school principals are here? School principals and teachers, yeah. Give me teachers. a thoughts please. Okay. <laughs> Students? Students? No? Mm. Okay. I'll take it to my home is, you need to be really you know, committed, your self-commitment is very necessary if you want to make that education available for each and every student and if you want to make that policies uh, be applied onto the ground zero like what i i think is i'll tell you a small story and i want the this doesn't goes out of this room i'm addressing to myself because a uh, uh, brand has given me this insight we have to gear up the system of education to face uncertainty among our children and uncertain, uncertainty may be caused by pandemic, natural calamities, environment pollution, and war, and communal violence. Thank you. Not a usual one. It's like don't be a pressure cooker. As this means for everyone, not a low flame. That means even if you are getting a pressure, uh, if anyone raises hands, extend a helping hand, please, and stop bullying or peer pressures for uh, related to your children, or raise your voices against crime or anything, and then save water and electricity. <laughs> Thing after this for me was the Rahul Institution, such as MGIP. Uh, bringing diverse stakeholders together, uh, being leaders for change, um, being the activists. Uh, so it's not just about government, but about bringing all the stakeholders and having some something outside um, that can also uh, lead each change. I feel so. Firstly, thank you all. Uh, what I want to say is, at times we lose the hope of when we have too much problems. Here, I come to know that we all have same problems and we all having the solutions. So as ma'am told me, I was very particular about sometimes we face problems and I'm like, let's just drop the problem and let's just work on something else. Hey, I come to know that we have solutions, we have different types of solutions and we can go another way. And thank you so much for the hope that I have been receiving from you. Thank you. Participants, there's so many stakeholders here. For all your time, I think the contributions were really, uh, it just, it came from heart. The conversation, if you said, they really felt for it and I think I felt group sitting here and I hope that you're going back with some revived passion and some brand new ideas and some good questions. Uh, so just thank you and this lovely evening. Thank you. Thank you, you. 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 you ma'am.